Hey everybody, Jill here again. Thanks so much for popping in today. We're going to be looking at uh, a couple of our new stamps and these are the mushroom ones. And I've had a couple of messages, I know Elizabeth messaged me and asked, well they were actually saying these ladies that they'd bought the mushroom stamps but they hadn't bought the whole collection. So this is the snail cap mushroom and the snail cap single mushroom just so I give you the right names because you know I'll make up names um, and she was saying that especially Elizabeth that this was all she'd be able to buy and she wondered if I could come up with a design that used those and I've just added uh, one of our other stamps and this is from the vine set I think it is yeah there's four on the vine set and one of them is this beautiful little leaf and I do use it a lot but I'm sure she'll have something in her collection that will go along the bottom um, I also thought recently I've been asked for um, cards for men because I'm afraid they can be a bit tricky sometimes, can't they? You know, um, and I think this, especially with these colour tones, I mean, if you didn't want to include the reds or the pinks, you could, this would be lovely in blues or greens or carry on and just use brown. Um, I think this could easily be developed. We've got our lovely pound snail that would go lovely on here. I mean, again, you could add other things. We've got birds. You know, it, it's just the starting point. And if you look, beautiful stencil work just in the background there. I'm not sure if you'll be able to pick it up. And I use that because here on the mushroom look, I think it's almost like a honeycomb. And I think that teams up beautifully. So that's the plan for today. So I hope you'll join me. Make yourself nice and comfortable. We're going to start with our multifarious card. And this is five and a half inch square. And the first thing I'm going to do is to stamp. When we're going to mask off an area, we need to stamp anything that's outside that area first. So our single beautiful snail cap mushroom is the one we'll stamp first. And I'm going to use Versafine Claire and it's the pine cone today. I just thought we needed a, a nice brown. Makes a change from black. It's nice to use something other than black. So I'm going to ink that up and stamp it sort of about roughly here. These stamp absolutely beautifully. Then I just want to add a little bit of that foliage around the bottom. And if you haven't got the vine set, I think the woodland ferns would look beautiful as well. Mind you, I'm sure like me, you've got favourites. I know we shouldn't have. I keep telling myself I shouldn't have favourite stamps, but I do. So I'm going to give that just a bit of a blot. Just before I add my tape. Now, I'm just going to, to make my frame, use your Malavinia. And this is the low-tack tape. And it's beautiful. You don't need to detack this at all. It's fabulous. It's perfectly low-tack. And it works lovely with the Multifarious cardstock. Now, I'm hoping I've got some in the frame here. So, let's have a look. Yeah, that's nice. And I just want it the width of my tape all the way around. And I'm doing this bit last just to give it a bit more of a chance to dry. So that takes it to there. There's something about a white frame I just really love. And what I'm going to do next is bring a little bit of the elements in just to give me, take the whiteness off the card. So I'm going to use Sahara and my large brush. And as always, I'm going to mix it in the lid. And then I'm just going to start in the corner up here. And you won't see much look. I always say Sahara is sort of a bit of a dirty brown colour, dirty yellow. But I just want, and I'm going all around the card. doesn't matter about going over this mushroom at all. just want to take the whiteness off the card. So I'm just going to add one more. Mix it on here as well. 
and that's almost going to give me a base when I come in with the brown don't know why but I just find for me I prefer it to just it's not as stark right let's get our beautiful snail cap mushrooms and this is the set with the two and what I love about these is remember you don't have to have them straight so I'm just putting them at a bit of an angle I just think they look a little bit more quirky so I'm going to put that one there. I nearly said plant it there. I suppose I am planting them, aren't I? And then let's go for the smaller one of the two. And then I'm going to pop that one sort of there. And then I'm just going to give that a bit of a wipe only because... I just want to move it now to the opposite side to give it a bit of a tilt the opposite way and I don't want to get ink on my finger so I find if I give it a bit of a wipe now let's see if I left enough room oh yeah it'll just go nicely there And I just love that combination of my group of three and then that one there on its own. So we'll come back in and add just a little bit more foliage at the base. And I'm just going to do some first and second generation for this. Just a little bit. Just to fill up that space at the bottom. I mean, obviously on the tape here, this that'll stay white won't it so then we'll give that a, a blot again and remember where you've stamped on your low tack tape that takes longer to dry so it is worth giving it a good blot if i show you if i lift this up look that hadn't quite dried so and the last thing i want is when i start blending my ink is that to, to move and smudge all these little things we need to think about. So when I was doing this, I was working out what colours to use. And as I say, we've used Sahara as our base coat. So I looked at my elements and I've got truffle, which is a beautiful brown, and mulberry, which is sort of a almost like a burgundy ready brown. So if we do them in in almost like in a um, ombre, the truffle will be next. So that's the one we'll go for. And I'm just going to check which is my truffle brush. This one, I think. And again, in the lid. Now, this is quite a, you'll see quite a contrast. And if I start at the base look in the corner, and I'm just going to drag a bit of the colour in just to give me a feel. If I bring it up, can you see? And I just want to get a feel for how brown it is, how dark it is. So I'll start in the corner again and then drag that down there. Now I am going to add my moon mask, but I just want to almost go around the frame first. And then, so last little bit at the base here. And then get my moon mask. And you know me, I like to do it upside down. Oh, look at that. That's more or less just fits in there. So start at the bottom and work my way around. And hopefully that will just meet up here with what we've done. To add a little bit more. Let's have a look. Can't pick it up. Sliding. There we go. And as you can see, this isn't too white. I almost wanted that creamy tone. So now we'll come in with the mulberry. And this, I'm coming in first. I've gone to a number three, the smaller one. And look how much colour I've got in my lid. Now I'm just going to give my little moon mask a bit of a wipe 
And then I want to build up just round the edge with this colour. And again, if I do that top corner and just show you, you can see what a lovely colour it is. So I'm just going to almost define that frame to start off with. So in the corners and then drag the colour down the side again in that corner. And then up the side just to frame the design. And right along the bottom. Up there. And then when you've got less ink on, you can just go around blending those lovely edges. And what we're going to do now is we're going to add the stencil work with this colour. But I don't want the stencil work over there. So I'm going to just cover that with our lovely circle mask. And this stencil is the honeycomb stencil look. So I can hold that there. And I've gone for a larger brush now because I want I don't want it too dark. And if I use my smaller brush, it may just be too dark. So let me have a little look. Oh, you see that's plenty. You just have to be gentle, tickle that stencil. Remember not to overcook it. I might just add a little bit down here. Yeah. Happy with that. Now, while this is on, I want a little bit of faux bleaching in there. So my mask, my circle mask will protect that. So we'll just add a little with our fan brush. Don't want too much. Just adds a little bit more interest, I think, the, those lovely little dots. But I don't want to lose the stencil work. Right, so we'll see if we can pick this up. There we go. And you see how that still shows up, but it's not too in your face. We'll give that a wipe and put that away. And then before we add some colour, I'm just going to give this a few minutes to full bleach. Get myself a piece of kitchen towel. Oh, look at that. I haven't even got a clean piece, have I? I bet you're like me, though. I bet you use things again and again. See, it's got a good side there. That's clean. I can use that. Oh, yes, that's just enough. Because obviously it will almost go whiter the longer you leave it. And you almost want the CP tones, not the bright white. If I bring that up, I'm hoping you can see what I mean. Now I'm just going to put my heat tool over this. Two things. One, it'll just help dry that faux bleaching. But also, you know me, I find it just helps that low tack tape. The Lavinia tape is fabulous. It will peel off anyway. But I always think belt and braces doesn't do any harm to have a little bit of heat and it'll just make it peel off even better. Now look at that, you get two at once there. There we go. And I always think there's such a re reveal when you reveal that white and you can see now how this is just off white. So... To add colour, I'm going to use my Zig markers. I've had a couple of questions asking why I haven't used them recently. And it's purely that I've been enjoying using my watercolour pencils. And if you're anything like me, you tend to have phases. So I took on board, I think it was Michelle that uh, emailed me. And I thought, you're right, I haven't used them for a while. So we're going to get them out. So the colours I've chosen is number 51, which is the lemon yellow. And then we're going to add a little bit of the 52 bright yellow. But mine, I always think it looks an orange. And then we've got a red and that's number 20. And teaming that, I've used a little bit of this gorgeous dark pink, which is number 21. And then I needed a couple of browns. So I've gone for 66, which is the dark oatmeal. And number 60, which is the brown. But, you know, any colours you choose. So I'm just going to start off and add a little bit of yellow on the stems and on the base under here. And as I say, you can just have fun. These are magical. I nearly said magical mushrooms and I'm sure that's something different. Um... So you can colour them any colour you want. 
I always think that's the beauty. We create our own artwork. We can go for any colour. Now I'm going to bring in a little bit of orange at the side and then just down just in these corners look it's just a, a bit of extra interest really I'm going to leave my lids off I find it easier to do that then I'm going to come back with my yellow and the brown and I'm going to pick up a little bit of brown on the yellow and just go into this middle bit where it's darker look and don't worry it won't affect this brush because you almost use the brown up and then it will go back to being yellow and it's just a really great way to blend and to get that depth in the middle and the fabulous way is the fact that it will go back to the yellow look so I can blend in now if I turn that over look and just show you on here if I get the brown you can see there's brown on the nib there so it colors like oh look it's brown and then it goes sort of a dirty brown and if I turn it all the way around you'll see it's gone back to yellow and I lift that up look the nib has gone back yellow and then what I like to do with the brown is just right at the middle where you want it really dark is come back in just gives you that shadow in the middle and again just blend that out a little and it's these little things that for me that just give that extra oomph that extra detail so now I'm going to come in with the red and over this lovely bit here that I think has got the honeycomb I must ask Tracy I think it does remind me of that honeycomb stencil And I just love the way it goes all the way around. And again, you will take your time. I need a clean piece to lean on. I mean, this will be an ideal one to um, stamp up and then colour when you've got some lovely time. Make yourself a nice drink and just relax and do some colouring. Now with the yellow... I'm going to come where all the dots are. I mean, honestly, have a close look at your stamping. It's only when you... Sometimes, I don't know about you, I think I've noticed everything on a stamp. But then when I stamp it and come to, a, you know, colour in, I actually notice how much detail there is. I think it's only sometimes when we use things that we actually realise, you know, what they're like. Now this is the bit I'm bringing in this lovely bright pink. Now, as I say, you may not want to use bright pink, but there are lots of other colours. You could choose a, another colour. I just fancied having something a bit sort of zesty. And because I'd got sort of the reddy brown colours, just felt it, it was going... Now, if you hear a funny noise, Eric is under my table, but it's getting ready time for him to, um, he wants to be fed and taken for a walk. So, if you start hearing somebody moving around, it's not me, it's Eric doing the mum, come and take me out, give me my tea. Those of you that have got cats, it's lovely to hear how many of your cats actually try and get in with your crafting. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to pop the lids back on this that's the red one there we go and very quickly look I've added some colour now I just want to brighten that up a little bit add a bit more again if this is for um, somebody who doesn't like bright colours or for a male friend and you wanted to leave it like that I think that's a good point to leave it what I would do is just here look I think it's nice if you just come in just with the ink that's left on your brush and add a little bit of ink there just it gives a bit of background colour then I think that looks a little bit nicer but let's just wipe that you know I would say it's nice to have that cohesive design just need a little bit in that corner there we go 
So I'm thinking the yellow sparkle Posca. And what I'm thinking, look, is these beautiful dots that Trace has drawn. They are crying out to have this beautiful sparkle and just a little bit round here and then down. And it's amazing what a difference it makes. So again, just on these. Again, this is when you notice that detail. If I just, can you see? Oh, I need just a little bit in there, under there. Not sure if you can pick that up. I hope you can. And then to finish off, I just want some yellow sparkle in there. So we'll get our trusty, and I'm holding it quite close, just so it doesn't go everywhere. I want to try and keep it. You could put some copy of paper just to protect your frame, but if I hold it close, I'm hoping I won't get any on the white space. I love the yellow sparkle. As I told you, I actually bought two because <laughs> I can't be without one. So I lift, if I lift that up, look, and it just, I love the way here we've got all those layers. We've got the ink, we've got the stencil, we've got the full bleaching, and now we've got those lovely sparkly bits of Posca. And then to finish off, I just got my beautiful sticker sentiments from set six. And I thought the brown ones, the vintage ones, went very well. On my original, I've got Believe in Yourself. So this one, we see, there are, there are so many that I like the look of. I think Count Your Blessings, I like that. See, I was very good there. That was quick for me, wasn't it? And you know my little tip, just pop it on your scissors. Just because I quite like this one here. See, I, could, I had it there on my other, but I like it here for this. I think just under the three there. Yeah, happy with that. And to back my card, I went for a piece of our beautiful Fired Earth set. So these are beautiful coloured cards, look, and the six inch square. So when I'd done this design, I used this one, look, and look. Doesn't that look fabulous? Although I was just wondering, there's a dark one. I didn't try the darker one. Let me see. See, even that one would go. Look at the difference. Lovely to have in. I mean, there's a beautiful green in this set. So that one's the fired earth. There are lots of different ones, so do check them out. So I'll bring in my original to show you. And here's the one that we've made today. So I hope you've enjoyed that. And if you've got the stamps, I hope it gives you a bit of an idea what to do. So I hope you enjoy playing and I can't wait to see what you do. Please tag me in so I can so I can look. You're such a clever lot, you. So Elizabeth, I thought I hope that's helped and I hope you have a go. So you take care, everybody. Enjoy your weekend when it arrives. Lots of love and hugs from me. Right, time to go and feed and walk, Eric. See you again soon. Bye for now.